If you've read the title, this is not clickbait. But first, let's take a step back. If you watched the last videos on my channel, I've been on a pretty successful streak of positive matches over the last months. And now that the college season is coming to an end, the more important matches are happening. If you haven't watched last week's video, which you should have, you saw that in the last regular season match we won 4-3 against Pacific, and we were able to win a shared regular season conference title. That's not all however, because the top 6 teams in the West Coast Conference every year then face each other at the WCC tournament to determine the sole winner and best team in the conference who gets all the glory. Last year we were able to win the tournament with an incredible 4-0 in the final, but this year it was going to be much tougher. The winner of this tournament was also going to be directly qualified for the end of the year NCAA tournament. A few days prior to playing, the draw came out and we were the number two seeds, playing once again Pacific, who defeated Portland in the previous round. So yes, we played the same team as last week, back to back, two weekends in a row. I don't have the videos for that match unfortunately, but I faced the same opponent as last week and came very close to winning, as I was 7-6, 6-5 and 15-30, so two points away from the match. The match got abandoned because we already won 4-0 at that time, so a much more convincing performance than last weekend. If you want to see how this match could have went, check out my last video so you can see how my opponent played. It was a very similar match. On to the finals now, and we were facing our biggest conference rival San Diego. Now, if you've seen my past videos, you know we've played them a few months ago and lost 4-1. They're a very strong team ranked number 18 in the country, but obviously we were gonna give 200% this time. Also, more than 82% of you guys watching my videos are not subscribed, and I'm sorry, but that's just unacceptable. We're currently at 3.6 thousand subscribers, let's try and get to 5,000 by the end of the year. So make sure you scroll just below the title of this video and absolutely smash that subscribe button and do it now. We actually played on court 3 in doubles, so not the same team as last time and we're off to a pretty strong start. 40 love up this first game and we're doing simple things, nothing too crazy but with good quality and intentions. And we hold. I do apologize the quality of this camera unfortunately is not the best but it does get a little better as the video goes on. Deuce point on the serve and then double fault for the break. We were definitely the more energetic side on this doubles court. They were a bit more laid back and the quality at the beginning wasn't great as they miss here again. There were definitely some good points played this doubles but in general I think once we established that early break it always felt like we were in control and not under threat too much. Here kind of a good exchange with all four guys involved and then the slop here at the end which ends up just out. They do hold serve, so now it's 3-1 and 30 on this game, so quite an important point. I play this heavy forehand to push him back, and then I see the net guy moving, so I go cross, and such a good play there. Also, the sound of this match starts now. I don't know why, but it's deuce on 4-2, and I close this high volley to get a tricky hold. They hold the next game, and we're 5-3, 40-15 with two match points, and we get into the rally fine. And they miss the volley there, and that gives the match 6-3. So great start to the day. For the following minutes we were watching the last doubles on court 2 and luckily we ended up taking that point as our guys won. So the doubles point was ours and now the hardest task, singles. Now I was on court 2 as I've been throughout the vast majority of this year and once again I was playing Irovaza, very strong opponent from Finland who's been ranked as high as 850 ATP and has even won an ITF 15k tournament last summer. You might remember him from the video I posted a couple weeks ago and that match I was able to beat him 6-4, 6-4. Let's see how it went today. I knew he had a strong serve and was a big hitter so so I knew it would be tougher to return and stay in rally today because these courts were quite a bit quicker than the ones we played in last time. I'm already complaining to the ref after the first point, don't know why but not good. Again sorry for the quality, it does keep shaking a bit and changing and overall it's just not very good. But it does get better throughout the match to where at least you can see the ball. And it was honestly too much of an important match to not post it. But yeah, another important factor for today's match was the fact that it was my first time in months where I had to play two matches in a row one day after the other, hitting full backhands or trying to. As I said, we played Pacific before this final, and I basically played an entire match with backhands. So if you want to see some underwhelming backhands this match, this is probably why. My wrist was hurting like crazy, but anyway, you can tell I was a bit nervous, just fixing the net there and before complaining to the ref. Go Go I find myself love 30 on my serve, and I knew I had to be the aggressive one to limit backhands and have him on the run, but it wasn't easy to do that cleanly. The courts were quick and it was a bit windy so it was easy to miss balls by an inch or two pretty frequently. So I needed some degree of patience as well as playing to bigger targets. I could see that he was also probably more pumped than last time and playing better. In longer rallies last match he would miss more frequently than I did but he's staying pretty solid here and then finds the forehand to close the point. So yeah I'm facing 4 breakpoints on my service game and he just doesn't have the intention of making me hit a forehand. Changes with this high ball, and you can see my discomfort in the back. He was also serving properly big, hard and flat to my back end, which was very hard to return. 
As you can see, I can't really find depth and barely make it in. 30-15 here, and another point where he does everything well, and I can only run and defend. I get this lob here, which turns out pretty deep, and he does miss the smash there, giving me a lifeline. He switches and goes wide here, and then slices it low to the other side, no way I can't put any spin on that pass, and sure enough I slice, and finally the second serve here 40-30, and I take advantage of that. And then follow with the inside in foreign, but my volley is not quite good enough, in fact it's terrible. Even though I lost that last point, I knew that was the tennis I had to play if I wanted to win. Because allowing him to dictate would not bring me many points, and he was clearly striking the ball well and feeling confident. So this is how I approach this next game, letting go some tension too, and I play a pretty solid point there. Oh, 3-1 and now I need to keep the momentum and put pressure on him, but nothing I can do here really. A 30 love another bomb I can't really hit through. And that's 40 love and ace. It was really a shame because one thing I saw from the last match with him was that he can play amazing when he's up in the score. But when he's down in the score or it's close, he can give you a few loose errors and his level can drop a little bit. So I knew if I got into more of a fight I could turn it around more easily. But with this bad back end and me playing not really at my best, even to get close score wise meant I needed to raise my level by quite a bit from one moment to the other. With him playing in full confidence which was a very hard thing to do. Again I'm short there and he comes forward and I'm not able to pass him, that's another point that has slipped away. I get the 30 all though, and this could be a very important point this thing to say. Yeah, two points there where he didn't miss a ball and he keeps ripping foreigns, not giving me a chance. Lots of first serves like he does here, big on my back end. 40-30, first set point. Really tough, I thought I had him in the first pass but clearly not, so that's the first set, 6-1, tough start. There were quite some things to change in the second set, one of the main ones was staying more deep. Maybe even at the cost of missing deep sometimes, but I literally didn't win a single point when he came to the net. I think my fighting spirit also lacked a little bit in the first set, so not sure how much of that would have made a difference, but it was still something I could bring on straight away at no cost, and maybe it could help me turn this match around. A good first serve to open the court up, and then big four and next, that's more of my tennis. On the return I think maybe I could risk a little bit more to try and take advantage of the rally more often. It was hard to do when he went straight to that side though. Change strategy here with the return, but the problem is I literally could not pass it. I guess for the time being I just had to focus on keeping serve and wait for him to give me something eventually, even though there wasn't really a sign of that happening yet. He does miss here though, at 30-15 a very important ace. 2-1 and now it's back to trying to find opportunities and keeping him back. The key to this from my side was just to basically not have him play to my back end. As you can see I do turn around here and as he's trying to hit deep he misses. 15-30, let's see if I can take this point to get closer to a break. Really, really unlucky there, and at 40 15, a first serve, and the volley just gives him the hold. Now, the first point of the next game was the longest of the match, so I'll let you watch this one. Let's go, 
Yeah, honestly, ran out of the ideas there. Luckily, the serve brings him back in the game, but at 15.30, it's the second serve, and he's aggressive straight away, and I miss. I cannot really afford to get broken, it will be a disaster, but I do though, and rightfully, I'm angry about it. Now, playing a breakdown, I knew he was gonna be more aggressive again, and put me under immense pressure. At some points, all I had to do was just scramble to try and make the most of it, but with these first serves, to my back end, I, it was tough to do anything better, really. The last I can do is now trying to stay alive on my service game. Pro is worth, you know you have to do all that's in your control, and maybe you can play a crazy good next game or a home miss and shake a bit, you never know. So I try to do my thing here, staying solid and waiting for the right chance. And that goes on quite a bit until finally he misses deep with the four. 4-3 him now, and he starts off with a double fall, which is great news for me, but that meant I absolutely had to win the next point to have a chance. I want to be aggressive, and my go-to is the inside in, but I missed that one, and that is one to be upset about. 15-0. Again, my short back end there screwed me over. Of course, an ace is next. And at 40-15, first serve again, and I missed the return. So yeah, definitely felt like that game had potential, but unfortunately, for a mix of reasons, I wasn't able to win it or get close to it. And I was back to fighting to hang on and let him serve it out. As it happened a lot throughout this match, I'm the one that misses. A much better point for me there, but I do lose the one after, so it's 15-30. And I really force and do my best there to stay in this rally, and he just misses the last inside in. Big first serve here to start off a super important point. Terrible decision making, as I know I physically can't go down the line, but I guess I didn't know what else to do, so I'm facing match point now. My forehand is out, and that is my biggest loss score wise this year, I think. Really not the performance or result I wanted to put up at this match with the trophy on the line and really disappointing honestly. I think there were a few factors maybe outside of my control that contributed to the loss but also areas where I could have done better. But I just found myself with low confidence on my best shots and that made it hard to make everything else fall into place. Not even a team win could save the day as after winning the doubles point we lost 4 singles before we could even take one and unfortunately you had to let them have the WCC trophy and all the joy that comes with winning the championship. Tough day in the books for me and everybody in the team, lots of things to learn from this and and maybe a very few positive things, but all we could do now was to focus on what came next and turn it around there. 